Welcome to another week of meals. Colin is starting off by doing this five ingredient crescent roll chicken casserole recipe. It starts off with a cheese sauce of cheddar cheese. Uh, we have cream of chicken and chicken broth. And then he's dicing up some chicken here. Uh, this is chicken breast that we were using. Uh, all of the recipes will be linked down below if I have a recipe to link. Uh, so we're just completing here the chicken that is going to get put into the um, refrigerated crescent roll dough. Just like his mama, he is eyeballing about a couple tablespoons of chicken. He's gonna roll that up as neatly as possible. It does prove to be a little bit challenging because uh, it kind of narrows a bit, but it doesn't really matter what it looks like. It's going to bubble up nice and wonderfully in the baking pan. This little guy probably could have been rolled a little bit more tightly so the chicken didn't fall out, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's just all gonna go in your belly, <laughs> regardless of what it looks like. So here is the last one here. Uh, the baking dish is greased. Um, it was sprayed with some coconut oil and a little treat for the dogs. And yes, I made Colin wash his hands afterwards. <laughs> and then any leftover chicken goes on top of the uh, finished crescent rolls. All right, ready for the cheese sauce. Now, the cheese sauce, we stirred it uh, throughout, just checking it periodically to make sure that everything was mixing well together and it wasn't boiling over or sticking to the bottom or getting burnt at the bottom. And then that is just gonna get dumped all over the crescent rolls. There you go. It looks like a lot of sauce, like it's completely drowning the crescent rolls, but you'll see what it turns out to look like at the very end uh, when we pull it out of the oven. So have faith, <laughs> it will turn out just fine. So that's ready for the oven right now that's been preheated per the instructions in the link below. Uh, and then we're just gonna wait to see what it looks like. And ta-da, there you go. You can see the crescent rolls really puffed up. Uh, the sauce is not drowning the crescent rolls any longer. The rolls got nice and golden brown. You can see how bubbly everything is. Uh, I would set that aside a bit to cool before serving it just so it's not too hot. But there you go, that is pretty much the dinner. Do yourself a favor and make some either extra crescent rolls or some biscuits or something because this sauce is really yummy. Um, I just put a little bit of extra sauce and some chicken around the crescent rolls to serve. Um, and that is pretty much the dinner done. Here you go, added a nice sweet kale salad. I believe it was from Whole Foods, one of those salad kits. And that was our dinner for the evening. Really, really good. Next up, I am doing kind of like a Filipino style picadillo. Uh, so I'm starting off sauteing some onions here and gonna get those nice and translucent. Adding a pound of ground beef. I believe this is 80-20, you can use whatever you like. Um, and just cooking that through and then seasoning it as I go. So that's a little bit of salt and pepper. And at some point you're gonna wanna mix the onions with the ground beef. So I'm just doing that here early on. Gonna cook that through until the ground beef is fully cooked before adding the potatoes. These are Yukon gold potatoes. I used about three small-ish ones uh, that I just diced up. You can use uh, Idaho potatoes, whatever kind of potatoes you have, but we're just gonna stir that through and now um, I'm gonna cover it and then try to cook the potatoes until they're nice and tender. Once the potatoes have had a chance to cook a bit, um, you don't want them to get too mushy, so kind of pace yourself. Um, I'm starting to season here another layer with salt and pepper. I'm adding some onion powder as well, just to bump up that onion flavor. 
and my garlic powder as well. So here we go. Potatoes are almost there. I did give it a little bit of a test to see. I, I took one of the little uh, cubes and had a little taste and it was still a little bit too hard, not fully cooked. So I'm gonna let that go a little bit longer. Decided also after that little taste test that it needed a little bit more salt. So I am a big promote, proponent of tasting as you go. Next step, I am adding a can of, um, what are these? These are diced tomatoes. And I think these are like just plain flavored, um, uh, seasoned rather. <laughs> you know how sometimes you can get like Italian flavored and um, or like Mexican style. This is just your plain um, diced tomatoes. After a bit of time under the lid, uh, the potatoes are really starting to cook now. That liquid from the diced tomatoes really, really helped. So I just want to get to a point where the potatoes are, um, are fork tender or till they're basically done. And then I'll add the remaining ingredients, which are the frozen veg. Now normally um, when my mom had made this in the past, we just use carrots and peas but I didn't have any and then I went to the store to just buy you know peas and carrots and they didn't have it so I just used the mixed veg that I had in the freezer it does have corn and it does have green beans but it actually added you know more texture uh, more green more color <laughs> so it worked out well Finally going into season with a little bit of some soy sauce and just a hint of fish sauce. Uh, you can get that in, in your um, regular supermarket down the Asian aisle or um, you know, if you go to your Asian market, they'll definitely have it there. So that's pretty much ready to go, just stirring it through. I'm gonna taste it again just to make sure it tastes the way I want it to taste. And that is the finished product. you can serve this with white rice which is what we did you don't really need to add rice if you don't want to it's got plenty of carbs with the potatoes and the veg but there you go that is our meal for the next night of the week this next one was really yummy now I don't know what happened to the clip of me making this um, what do you call it this flour thing <laughs> flour mixture it's flour with a bunch of seasoning so the recipe will be down below but it's got like thyme and garlic powder and onion powder um, oregano I think um, but this is basically going to be like a pan fried uh, chicken I'm using chicken thighs with a cream cheese sauce so the recipe is down below you'll have all that info uh, in the link so I'm just going here and dredging the chicken there's no egg wash or anything it's just the flour mixture um, and then we're going to set that aside and uh, continue with the rest of the recipe. Just heating up some olive oil here. Okay, I've heated my skillet here with some oil and I'm putting the chicken in. You just want to get these nice and brown. Um, yes, you do want to cook them through. Uh, they're not going to continue to cook in the oven or anything like that. Um, so you want to make sure that all of your chicken will be cooked, uh, co fully cooked. There's that nice uh, golden brown. So I'm removing this piece here. Uh, your chicken's gonna vary, you know, some pieces are thicker than the others. So I am just watching to make sure that each individual piece is cooked, uh, fully cooked. Um, and you might also wonder what I'm doing with the tongs here um, to avoid sort of cross contamination. I do switch between like clean tongs uh, for cooked chicken and another set of tongs for the raw chicken so anything that touches raw chicken will get a separate one and um, so that way I don't contaminate the other pieces so uh, this is the last piece here and you'll see in just a second the finish product what the chicken looks like so you want them nice and golden brown uh, with a nice color to them and fully cooked of course 
deglazing here with a bit of a chicken stock, so just scraping the bottom to get all those browned bits up. And now I'm adding some cubed uh, room temp cream cheese. I believe this is about four ounces. So um, you're gonna want to melt that down uh, so it becomes a nice creamy sauce and that's really the extent of this sauce. It actually tastes really good So it's just chicken stock. I used a bouillon with water uh, So that's what I used for my quote-unquote chicken broth chicken stock um, and then you'll see me flip flop between uh, the the wooden spatula <laughs> and this metal uh, whisk so the reason I did that was I really, really actually wanted to use a whisk, but the sound of the metal scraping the skillet was just driving me crazy and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't wanna keep doing that. So note to self, I need to get a silicone coated whisk for using in my skillet. But here we go. You can see the bits of the cream cheese are now smaller and I'm just kinda mixing it around until it becomes a creamy sauce. Okay, finally, we are getting somewhere. <laughs> it took a little bit longer than I had liked, but again, it's just because of my tools, and sorry, the dogs are barking in the background if you can hear them, um, but I'm gonna give it a taste here, and as I mentioned, it tastes really good. Um, it adds some salt if you think it needs a little bit of salt. Because I use a bouillon, I didn't need to do that, and it was perfectly fine, but if you use a milder chicken stock or like a low-sodium kind of broth, uh, you might want to add some salt to it. Okay, last step is to add the cooked chicken back into the sauce. I believe the instructions say to um, to fully coat both sides. I didn't really like the way it looked and that was just an aesthetic thing. So I uh, just put it back into the pan and served it that way just for purposes of this video. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, you can coat both sides and or drizzle some of the sauce on top of the chicken. Uh, it is. It was good, it was good. Uh, Rob really liked it. Colin thought it was good, but he is like a plain, uh, plain chicken kind of person. He doesn't like spices and stuff like that too much. So um, he thought it was okay. Um, he did like the sauce, but uh, for, for those of you that don't like, um, that don't like a lot of seasoning, uh, this might not be for you, but it was really mild, I would have to say. So there it is, served it up with just some um, steamed spinach, uh, and sautéed spinach rather, and that was our dinner for the next night. Last meal of the week I'm sharing with you, I'm doing uh, some garlic noodles recipe linked below. These noodles are just so yummy, I don't know how else to describe them. They're just really, really good. I am starting off prepping some ingredients, basically just the scallions or green onions with uh, minced garlic. I'm gonna set this aside to cook later in the day. I'm doing all of this prep in the morning because uh, I have some things to do in the middle of the day. Uh, and what else am I gonna do? And then I'm also gonna prep the chicken, so you'll see me uh, dice that up in just a little bit. So here's the chicken. I'm just using two rather large uh, frozen, they're, well, they're slightly defrosted chicken breast. And this is really a good way to dice up your chicken. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier if they're slightly defrosted. Um, they stay in like really nice, perfect cubes. <laughs> so I'm doing that here. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to marinate this in the Yoshida's, my favorite Yoshida's marinade. And then I'm gonna let that com uh, completely defrost in the refrigerator the rest of the day. 
So that is how I'm prepping the chicken. Now the garlic noodle recipe doesn't call for chicken, but I'm gonna add chicken to it uh, just to beef it up some. And then, um, yeah, Colin really likes chicken, so I'm gonna do that. And here is that Yoshida sauce that I just love. I got this huge uh, bottle of it from Costco, so it has lasted quite a long time. So there is the chicken all ready to go back into the fridge to completely defrost. And then here is the veggies that are the garlic and the scallions that I prepped ahead of time. Now the other thing I'm going to prep is the sauce for the noodles. So I'm adding fish sauce and um, some oyster sauce right here. So again, recipe will be down below so you know exactly how much to use um, of each ingredient. And then the other thing I'm going to do is add some sweetener to this. Uh, the recipe calls for sugar. I'm going to use monk fruit just because I don't... Even though this recipe is not super keto friendly per se, I like to reduce the amount of actual sugar that I use. You know, if a recipe calls for sugar and I can simply substitute monk fruit for that, I'll do that. So give this a little bit of a taste. Um, I do adjust it and add a little bit more sweetener um, to this sauce and then I'm gonna set that aside and then go about my business during the day and come back later to put everything together. Okie dokes, Colin and I have just returned from uh, taking a stroll. He had to uh, do some walking for one of his classes, and so I joined him, and uh, now I'm going to cook dinner. I'm glad that I had everything prepped ahead of time. I'm gonna cook the chicken, so basically just taking it out of the Ziploc bag. Cooking, cooking, the chicken is perfectly defrosted now. So I'm just gonna cook that in the oil until it's fully cooked and then move on to the rest of the recipe. While the chicken is cooking away, you can see I have another pot going in the back here. I'm starting to boil some water to prep the noodles. Uh, so I'm kind of multitasking a bit here. I'm gonna be just using regular spaghetti. So once the chicken is fully cooked, I'm going to remove it from the pan and, um, and move on with the rest of the recipe. Okay, water is to a full rolling boil now, so I'm adding my pasta. So I'm just gonna watch that, make sure it doesn't overcook. I don't want the noodles to be too uh, soft and mushy. Um, and while that's starting to heat, reheat uh, or heat through, I am gonna add some oils to my, um, to my other pan. So I left the residual uh, marinade in there and any juices that cooked off from the chicken. Uh, so I just left that in there. It's gonna add a bit more sweetness to the dish as well. Again, that was olive oil and butter that I had added and I'm just gonna go back and forth between here to make sure the noodles are not sticking and that they're not overcooking. Here are the green onions and minced garlic that I prepped ahead of time earlier in the day. I'm gonna cook that through just so everything infuses all of the oil and the, you know, all the wonderful aromas from the garlic and the scallions kind of blend together. Um, so I'm just gonna cook that through for probably, I don't know, about five minutes or so. You can see the liquid has reduced a bit and it's mostly just now the oils, uh, the fats. Uh, and then once that is all said and done, I'm gonna add the sauce to this. I'm gonna bring the heat way down to like low, like super low just so that it stays hot, um, but that it doesn't evaporate completely because I'm still waiting for the noodles to finish. Once the noodles are done, I am going to drain them. I'm using a spider here. You can drain them over a sink or use a colander or something, but I'm just gonna transfer them to the other pan here with the sauce. I'm just gonna mix that through. I'm gonna add the chicken and then that will be dinner pretty much done.
And the last bit of yumminess I'm adding is some grated Parmesan. Now, this is actually Parmesan Romano, but you can use a regular Parmesan. Uh, recipe says to go ahead and use this. It's kind of weird because you're like, well, it's an Asian dish. Why am I putting Parmesan cheese, which is kind of Italian? <laughs> um, but it tastes good. It really accentuates the other flavors. I'm, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but just give it a try. You can start off with a little bit if you'd like and then add more uh, depending on how you if you like the flavor or not. But that's, again, pretty much our dinner done. I am just taking some frozen broccoli now and I'm using the, uh, what do you call it? Like the leftover pasta water, <laughs> just to kind of heat it through. I'm not seasoning it at all. Uh, there's plenty of flavor in the noodles and I like to balance it by having kind of neutral tasting things sometimes. Um, sometimes I I'm not a huge fan of a lot of salty things. So I want to make sure that the the veggies are going to balance out the noodles. And here you go, our finish of dinner with that side of broccoli. So good, so indulgent. I had, I had a quite a bit of this pasta. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you give any of the recipes a try, please do let me know how you like them down below. I will see you in the next video. Take care.